There's a new strategy coming from the Biden campaign. Forget the big campaign rallies and try those small events. Focus on social media. Kind of adopting a new role for him, Biden as influencer in chief. It's all part of an effort to court the disengaged voters that are critical to his reelection. And to reach them, Team Biden is turning to TikTok and YouTube. Yeah, this is what happened when the president and first lady came to our house for pizza. Here's Betsy hamming it up with the president. You did awesome last night. Fantastic. God love you. Come with me to meet the president of the United States and then attend the largest DNC fundraiser in American history. So tell me about you. Well, I have a star just like you, you do. I did too, but don't let anybody tell you that you can't do anything. You can do whatever you want to do. Thank you so much. You're so good. Is that good? Thank you. Let's bring in NBC News White House correspondent Mike Memoli and Democratic strategist Basil Smeichel, former chair of the New York State Democratic Party. OK, Mike, you report that the Biden campaign is organizing events with the president. They're specifically designed to generate social media engagement, days of coverage from local media outlets. Tell us a little bit more about it and how they hope it will work. Well, Chris, if you look at how the president is facing really uh, uh, headwinds on a number of issues, the economy, the border, the situation in the Middle East, there's also a larger challenge facing the Biden campaign, which is just the sour mood that many Americans are in. And the Biden team sees a lot of the voters that really could decide this election are also those individuals who are most fed up with politics right now. The last thing they want to hear about is that we're in the middle of a presidential campaign. So if you can't bring these voters into the campaign, you have to bring the campaign to them and they're doing that in through their social media channels you look at what the president did over the last month traveling to these eight battleground states yes in each one of these states he did your traditional podium event a modest crowd let's say uh, speaking about a particular issue but they also built into his schedule these kinds of OTRs we call them retail events you saw he had pizza at the home of one family a business owner in the Philadelphia suburbs he went uh, in North Carolina to the home of a man who had a significant amount of his student debt relieved the same thing in Michigan. The point is traveling with their own digital team, filming these more intimate settings, these conversations, and some of them are posted online uh, to the campaign's accounts immediately. Some, like that video you played uh, of that pizza dinner with the First Lady and the President, posted a full month after the fact. They get, yes, local coverage uh, in the local media in real time, but then they can put these out in their channels over a, a longer period of time. And when the campaign talks about this strategy, they note, for instance, that some of the most uh, consumed content on Instagram is not something that's posted publicly. It's, it's shared in direct messages. And so the idea is to get maybe some of those people who do support the president to share this content with their own social network, including some of those disengaged voters, and so that they can eventually bring these people back into the campaign. So, Basil, let's talk about this as a strategy. I spent more than 20 years in local news, yeah. newspapers, radio, right. television. They're right about that. That hasn't changed since when I was doing local news. The president of the United States goes into somebody's house yep. in it's your coverage story. area. It's a big deal. And you're going to get tons of stories about it. The neighbors are going to get one story and the family's going to get another story. And they're going to talk to people involved in the campaign. That's one part of it. The other part of it is you can hear the other side saying he can't fill a big auditorium. He can't get a big crowd out the way Donald Trump can. I wonder what you make of this as a strategy. Actually, I think it's a good strategy. It's a great story, and I love Mike's reporting on it, because it is important to take the campaign to the voter. You know, one of the important campaign heuristics is, does he care about people like me? And it's actually hard to say that and see that from a podium where the camera is so, solely focused on the speaker and not the 10 or 20,000 people in the audience. But if you're going to somebody's home in a small town and talking about the importance of that town to the fabric of America, then that that the subject of that and those neighbors are going to care and they're going to participate and engage. So it's really important, in my view, that the campaign do this, that they create this shareable content, because my students know that most of their news 
they get they get from TikTok. And so if they have they have the ability to send that information out and particularly get to disengaged voters and young voters, it's incredibly important. Meantime, Politico is reporting that one of Biden's longest and closest allies is former chief of staff Ron Klain. Um, it's questioning his reelection strategy and in particular some of the things that he's talking about. He thinks he's talking too much about infrastructure, not enough about the economy. According to audio that Politico got, Klain says, quote, I think the president is out there too much talking about bridges. He's not a congressman. He's not running for Congress. How interesting is the bridge? It's a little interesting, but it's not a lot interesting. Klain concedes Biden's got an infrastructure record to run on, but maybe it's not the most fascinating conversation he can have. Does their comms need to relook at what he talks about and how he talks about it? Well, if you're talking about a bridge and infrastructure, it's very important to the people of Maryland right now, especially the mayor of Baltimore, who had to go on TV to talk about how his race didn't have anything to do with the bridge collapse. So, yeah, it, it, it matters in very specific parts of the country. And But I also think that that's why the campaign has said, let's put out the cabinet members. Because I would love Pete Buttigieg, he's already doing this, going out and talking to voters about infrastructure. He acknowledges that it takes a long time to build something. But what he also saying is you can get union apprenticeships through these projects. You can get MWBE contracts through these projects. I think Biden can focus on the big picture, the broad strokes. His cabinet members are doing exactly what they're supposed to do, talking about how the individual can get access to government, government services, government contracts. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.